Okay, this time I want to talk a bit about, um, well, some obscure or fairly obscure uh, facets of driving regulations. Something that a lot of people aren't aware of is that driving too slowly on a highway, for instance, it can actually get you a ticket. Most jurisdictions that I'm aware of, at least that I've checked into, um, actually all of the ones I've, I've checked into, have a regulation that prohibits traveling slowly enough to impede the flow of traffic. The thing about these regulations uh, is that it's not clear how they apply in the case where the slow moving vehicle is actually the one traveling at the speed limit. Now it is true that if all the traffic is traveling at approximately the same speed or exactly the same speed ideally, that traffic flows best and it's pretty much the safest uh, situation because nobody's catching up to anybody and as a result nobody's going to need to adjust their speed suddenly or anything like that. So the, the uh, you know, there, there's something to this. Also, you're going to reduce the incidence of road rage due to being held up and things like that. However, I've noticed, and I'm sure anyone else who's ever driven has noticed this as well, is that a lot of people are traveling in excess of the speed limit and by a non-trivial amount, you know, not not something that could be passed off as the margin for error in a speedometer. No, we're, we're seeing people traveling 120 or 125 in 100 kilometer an hour zones, uh, or 70 in 50 zones, that sort of thing. Now, in some circumstances, some roads, this type of speeding is the norm. Almost everybody is doing it. And you can convince yourself of that by traveling at that speed and discovering you're not passing very many people. Uh, but I don't uh, condone doing that because that's speeding and that's actually illegal. Still, it's, uh, it's a bit of a conundrum when everybody's traveling 120 in a 100 zone and you got one guy doing 100. That one guy doing 100 looks like the hazard on the road, and in fact, probably is. And you would think that because he's going so much slower than all of the other traffic, that he would be guilty of that impeding traffic flow uh, offense. I wondered about that myself. Uh, as I've heard stories in various, uh, from various jurisdictions where you can actually get fined for holding up traffic while traveling the speed limit. Apparently, Washington State is uh, like that. Uh, I suspect, however, that traveling the speed limit actually exempts you from it. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's it, you know, I can't base the analysis on anecdotes because that doesn't actually tell you what the law actually says. And just because someone may have got pulled over for going too slow while they were doing the speed limit, it doesn't mean that was a valid offense. It doesn't mean that the peace officer pulling the person over was actually uh, in the right. So, what exactly is the situation? Because we know, at least if we're being honest, that speed limits are the absolute maximum speed you're permitted to travel on a, a uh, particular piece of road. They are not, like so many wingnuts on the internet like to say, guidelines or a suggested speed. No, they're the maximum speed in ideal conditions. And, you know, there's generally some provision saying that if conditions aren't ideal or, or whatever, there's some, something impairing safety or whatever that slowing down is required. Okay, fine. Um, so we'll accept 
and we'll take it as read that, that speeding is illegal, since it actually is. Uh, but how does that combine with the impeding traffic uh, regulations when the slow traffic is at the speed limit? Well, I did see in a comment uh, on a, a YouTube video which showed a road rage incident uh, at, where there was some discussion about this because that's what led to the overall incident in the video was somebody going apparently well below the speed limit and, and it held up the guy taking the video and a whole bunch of events ensued. It turns out this took place in California, and somebody posted an excerpt from the California, uh, relevant California law, which uh, mentioned that traveling too slow in impeding traffic is an, an offense, except where, uh, except if it's done in compliance with the law. And that's the key thing that everybody in the discussion completely ignored. Presumably, staying at or below the speed limit would be required for compliance with the law. There you go. So if you're traveling the speed limit, theoretically that particular provision would not apply. Now, I'm not a lawyer, and I didn't look at the uh, surrounding text and the overall legal context of that particular excerpt from the California laws. So I don't know if there is some other provision related to speed limits or something that might invalidate that interpretation. What I did do, however, as a result of this, is take a look at the traffic laws in Alberta, where I live and therefore where I do the vast majority of my driving. It seems reasonable I should know what these laws say. Now this particular provision never really affects me because I don't tend to drive slowly uh, it, when the conditions are good. Uh, if, the, if the speed limit's 100k, I'm usually doing somewhere close to 100k. So I'm not likely going to trip on this particular provision. Now, while I was checking on it, I checked two things. Speed limits and whether they're really defined as an absolute maximum. I know they are, but I checked on it anyway, just for completeness. And I wanted to see where it was defined in relation to the other regulations. And then I checked on the uh, impeding traffic flow uh, regulations. What I discovered was kind of interesting. I discovered there's two relevant documents in Alberta. There's the Traffic Safety Act, which is the relevant legislation that uh, governs uh, road travel, driving, that sort of thing. And it's fairly long. And there's a regulation, a separate regulation, that's created under the authority of the Traffic Safety Act, which has the majority of the actual rules of the road. Now this division does make some sense because it makes it a little easier to find the relevant provisions for rules of the road. I, uh, I, checked, uh, I checked on this. The first thing, I looked up the uh, speed limit provision. I don't have the specific reference, but it's in the, the Traffic Safety Act, and it specifies that exceeding the uh, maximum speed limit is an offense under the Act. It also states, and this is an important bit, that in the event of a conflict between the Act and any regulation uh, created under the Act, the Act will prevail. That means that a provision in the Act cannot be overridden by a provision in the regulations. That gives you an absolute hierarchy of authority. And that's actually important to understand the situation here. So I, I established that speed limits are in fact absolute. You're not allowed to go faster than the maximum speed limit or it's an infraction under the Traffic Safety Act. So then I looked up the regulations because there isn't anything else in the Act, at least that I could find in, on a quick scan, 
related to the uh, impeding traffic flow and that sort of thing. Now, in the regulation, and you can find both the Act and the regulation itself at the Queen's Printer website for Alberta. So, if you want to look at the relevant uh, document uh, documentation, it is available for free on the web. So, you can find it with a quick Google search, uh, I'm sure. Okay, so now the regulation has a section. It's in, under Part 1, Division 1 whatever that means. Uh, there's a heading, Driving at Appropriate Speed. That deals with all sorts of modifications to, to the maximum speed, like are you having to go slower because of conditions, that sort of thing, like road surface, uh, uh, weather, that sort of thing. It also has, this in, and this is in Section 2, Subsection 1, uh, which starts with, a person shall not do any of the following. So these are things that you're not allowed to do. Uh, in paragraph B, it, it says, and remember, that I'm going to start it with a person shall not, because uh, that's, that's for context. This is uh, related to um, where you can drive slower, um, and this is also important. So... Uh, it, so this is section or is a paragraph B. Um, so a person shall not, subject to this part and part two, where a highway that is located outside an urban area has two or more traffic lanes on the same side of the center line for use by vehicles traveling in the same direction, drive a vehicle in the traffic lane nearest the center line unless the vehicle is being driven at or near the maximum speed permitted. Uh, okay, so that provision just basically says that the leftmost lane on a multi-lane road outside of an urban setting is reserved for traffic traveling at speed or close to the speed limit. Uh, so that means don't travel below the speed limit in the left-hand lane. That's basically what it means. It goes on to say in paragraph C, a person shall not drive a vehicle at such a slow rate of speed so as to impede or block the normal and reasonable movement of traffic then existing on a highway, except when it is necessary to do so for the safe operation of the vehicle or to comply with parts one and two. That is the impeding traffic flow provision. And I should note that parts one and two refer to the regulation. The, the document I'm reading from. Uh, so uh, basically these two provisions in B and C are specifically subordinating themselves to the rest of the regulation. There's one more provision that uh, is uh, relevant here, and that's uh, uh, Section 2, Subsection 2. And that goes on to say, notwithstanding Subsection 1B, a person driving a vehicle on a highway at a speed that is below the maximum speed limit that is established or prescribed for that highway may drive the vehicle in the traffic lane nearest to the center line for the purpose of overtaking and passing another vehicle. Uh, so basically, you can always use any lane to the left of your current lane of travel to pass somebody going slower as long as you're not exceeding the speed limit. That, there's two things here that, that's related to impeding traffic flow. One is uh, going slow in the left-hand lane, the leftmost lane. And the other is just generally going slow and impeding traffic flow. Okay, so uh, you, you, have, uh, you have the two, two provisions there. I'll, t I'll pick on the lane usage one first. When you have multiple lanes, the whole point of this is to make sure there's a lane available for the traffic that's traveling at or near the speed limit to get past the slower moving traffic. And this is a 
a less general uh, form of the slower traffic keep right notion, where you keep or, or keep right except to pass, where you you need to always stay in the right hand lane unless you're passing somebody. And then if there's more than two lanes, if there's a third lane, you don't get into that third left that third lane until, unless you're passing somebody in the second lane, and so on. Now the specific provisions that I looked at here, they they basically mean that uh, it's only the left hand lane, the leftmost lane that's restricted. If there's three lanes, you can drive in in. Uh, uh, the two rightmost lanes at whatever speed. Uh, you don't have to get out of that middle lane just because you're not passing. It also means that if you're traveling in that leftmost lane at the speed limit, you're fine. Uh, that means that in the absence of directions to the contrary, a keep right except a pass sign, for instance, you can, you can perfectly legally drive in that leftmost lane at the speed limit, and it doesn't matter that somebody might be going faster. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward, uh, and it's general, generally accepted practice that in a multi-lane piece of road, you keep right unless you're passing. Okay, so far so good. It's worth noting also that there is no provisions in the regulations or the law about what to do, uh, how these things apply if somebody is traveling above the maximum speed. And that makes sense because, as I mentioned earlier, traveling above the maximum speed limit is not permitted at all. So it doesn't matter what, how these would apply in that case because it's not allowed. Now, the other provision, which is going so slowly that you impede the regular reasonable flow of traffic, that one's a little more ambiguous. Uh, how do you define reasonable flow of traffic? That's, you know, a question. Uh, most people, I think, would accept that if you're causing a stack of behind you that you're pretty much impeding traffic. Uh, or if you're going slowly enough that a lot of people are getting impatient and bouncing around you as soon as they possibly can, whether it's safe or not, yeah, you're probably impeding traffic. And to be fair, uh, the police uh, aren't generally going to be going around looking for people to ticket with this particular offense. I think most cases when people get tagged with it, it's particularly egregious, like going 20 in a 60 zone uh, or or 30 in a 100 zone or something like that. Um, or if they get rear-ended uh, and they were going, uh, you know, 70 in a 100 zone or something like that. Now, it occurs to me that impeding the reasonable flow of traffic would also take into account whether passing is possible. So if you're on a road where passing's permitted, a two-way traffic road where passing's permitted, and there's hardly ever any oncoming traffic, that slower moving vehicle is not really impeding the reasonable movement of traffic on that road. But if you get a much heavier volume of traffic oncoming so that passing is a rare event, then that would definitely be impeding the regular the reasonable flow of traffic. Okay. So uh the question then becomes, okay, so I've got a stack of people stuck behind me because they can't pass. Well, I'd be holding up traffic. I'd be, it'd be an infraction under this provision, right? <clears throat> but what if I'm going the speed limit? What if everybody else on the road speeds regularly? They're going 115 in a 100 zone all the time. And it's not unreasonable that this might be the case. Uh, it's illegal, but not unreasonable if you've got, say, a long straight piece of road where you've got miles of visibility. It's not unreasonable to, to think that people might end up traveling that at 120 or 130. If you can see forever and the road service is good and all of that, then a speed limit of 100 does seem a bit arbitrary.
and well, it is actually arbitrary. But so if the normal flow of traffic on that road is at 130 kilometers an hour, regardless of the speed limit being 100, is the guy doing 100 impeding traffic flow? Well, yes. Yes, he is. The thing is, everybody else is, is the one uh, committing the moving violation, not the guy impeding traffic by traveling at the speed limit. Uh, remember I said that in the event of a conflict between the Traffic Safety Act and the regulation, the act prevails? Well, this is where it comes into play. The speed limit provision is in the act. The impeding traffic flow provision is in the regulation. Therefore, to not impede traffic flow, you would have to travel above the speed limit. And that would be forbidden by the act. And therefore, the speeding prohibition trumps the impeding traffic flow prohibition. So, there you have it. Speeding is always wrong, no matter whether it's slow, you're going slower than the rest of the traffic on the road or not. Uh, always hold to the speed limit. That is the law that trumps the don't impede traffic regulation, in Alberta at least. I invite anybody outside of Alberta to check their, the laws in their own jurisdiction. It may vary. Uh, and if there is a conflict, I encourage you to contact your local legislators to get that fixed because it's not reasonable for a law to require you to break the law to comply with the law. It's not reasonable at all. And any reasonable court will throw out either offense in that case. That's it for uh, impeding traffic. Uh, I think in the next weeks I'll probably discuss some other aspects of driving, uh, you know, bad driving, whatever. Uh, Canada's worst driver is on the air right now, uh, and it's always fascinating to see what's going on in there. So uh, perhaps I'll uh, talk more about uh, driving uh, situations in the next weeks. Um, we'll see if something else comes up in the meantime. Uh, but, for now, thanks for watching.